All right, Gary Simon here, of course, Setro.com. And in front of me is the very, very simple app that we're going to use to demonstrate the speech recognition plugin. All right, so I'm going to click on, say, a color. Red. And there we go. So we'll do it one more time here. Green. Okay, so basically what's happening here is we're using speech recognition to change uh, through style binding, angular style binding, the background color based on whatever was entered or said. So if I say something ridiculous, it's not a CSS background property like blah, blah, blah. Well, there you go. It's not going to work. So there, the whole purpose is just to show you how to uh, get up and running with this native uh, Ionic plugin and how to use it and how to do some different logic things with it. All right, so let's get started. Oh, but real quick, before we begin, make sure you check out my site, CourseCetro.com, where you're gonna find a bunch of courses on modern design and development. A lot are free, and the others you can access for the cost of buying me like a six pack each month. That's it. Now also, it probably wouldn't hurt to subscribe here on YouTube, and be sure to make sure the notifications are turned on. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so let's go ahead and make this project a reality here. So to start, we're going to make sure that we have the Ionic CLI or the command line interface tool installed. Um, if not, it's probably a good idea to update it anyhow, or if you do already. So I'm just going to run here in the console npm install hyphen g for global Ionic at latest. So I'm going to pause while this installs and updates. All right, and then once that's finished, we're going to go ahead and use CCI to start a simple project with a blank template. So Ionic start speech, and that's the name I'm going to give it, a speech, and then the blank template. And then I'm going to hit Y for this, for yes. All right, so it's just going to take a couple moments to install. All right, after it's done, we're going to CD into it, speech. And now at this point, we're going to go ahead and do what it takes to install the actual speech recognition plugin. So I, I'm going to refer to the documentation for this because it gives you the two lines you need to paste in instead of just sitting here and typing this all out. All right, so if you just uh, go to Google and type in Ionic speech recognition, it'll bring you to this page. Uh, it's like the top result. Uh, so here are the steps right here. We want to copy this line right here, right, right click over here and let that install and while that is installing we'll go back and we will copy this and run that immediately after this command is finished all right so paste that and install and then going back to the documentation usage we're going to copy this top line notice step two this is very standard for any of these uh, Ionic native plugins. You have to install them usually with two lines right here and then add it to the apps module. So once that's done, go ahead and open up your code editor. All right, and I'm in the folder here, the new speech folder. We're going to go to source app in the app module and we're going to paste. Sorry if you heard a barking dog back there. All right, and just paste in this right here, this line, copy speech recognition, and we will add it here under the providers array. Very standard stuff once again. So now let's save this and we're gonna to go to our pages and our home TS file. And before we do that, let's go back here, copy this line once again, and we're going to paste it here up top as well as create an instance of it through dependency injection. So we'll put private here and we'll make this Simply speech recognition in camel case. And then also speech recognition. All right. Next, underneath here, or actually above here, we're going to define a property real quick first. So the property is going to be our BG color property. So BG color of a type string, and we'll make it default to white. And that will be the default background color of the app. And underneath here, we first have to access 
uh, you, we're going to use ng on init lifecycle hook, which will uh, allow us to put in any type of code that needs to run when the component loads. So ng on init. All right, and inside of here, we're going to use the speech recognition has permission method. So we're going to reference this speech recognition has permission. All right, so we're going to put in then. We pass in has permission as a type boolean, which is true or false. And inside of here, we're simply going to say if has permission. So we're, just, we're saying if the, it does not have a permi the permissions, then we're going to call the request permission method. So this dot speech dot request and then and this was just copied right from the documentation this part right here um, we can this is a simple a couple of just a uh, console logs going on here so console dot log is granted it will console log granted and console log otherwise denied all right, just like that. And so that's all that code uh, is required there to first check if the uh, app has the permission. And then if not, then it will request permission. It just puts up a, um, a dialogue that says, um, <clears throat> it allows them to choose whether or not to allow the app to have access to it. Um, next, we're gonna go ahead and create a method for when a user clicks on a button and we'll call this start. So let's start right here, put in start. And this is where we're going to use the start listening method. So this.speech.startListening. And we're going to subscribe. And we're gonna put in matches as a type array with strings. And inside of here, we're going to say this.bgColor equals matches and at the very first result. So matches is an returned array based on the list of possible matches based on how the speech recognition interprets what the user said. So a returned result might look something like, and I'm gonna paste this from the written tutorial. So don't, don't even type this out. This is just for reference. I'm gonna hit control P to get rid of that sidebar. It might look like something like this. So it will it might say, if you said, for instance, my name is Jeffrey Bongus, <laughs> I made up that last name, um, then it's going to return an array that has maybe pot potentially four different items in it, which one would be my name is Jeffrey Bongus, and then maybe if it says Jeffrey with one F, uh, and then maybe there will be one with um, where the, the, the instead of a, a U, it'll be an I. So you don't just get a single result turned uh, unless you specify otherwise in the options that you can pass into start listening. And in the options right here, you could specify uh, the number of possible matches to return. So in our case, we could actually just pass in one since, since we aren't, we're only going to take the very first. Um, I'm not going to mess with that though, but you can also specify the language and a few other parameters and you could check the um, ionic negative uh, speech recognition page and documentation for that. But um, we're just going to grab the very first one because we're simply requesting one word, a one word answer. So that's why um, just choosing the first one should be sufficient. All right. So I, uh, next, that's basically it right there. So let's just save that. We're going to go to app module or no we're going to go to get our sidebar back up and go to the template here and i'm going to gut everything except for the ion content and in ion content we're going to first use angular style binding so we're going to put in brackets style dot and then the css property so it's going to be background color um background would just work as well um but I'm going to be specific. And then inside of here, we're going to bind it to our BG color property that we defined in the component. Next, we're going to have a button, just a single 
ugly button and oops, I messed that up. Sorry about that. Ion button and a click event that will call the start method that we defined. Say a color and that is it. So that is an extremely very bare bones, simple app. Um, by the way, if you wanted to, within our start, we could also, just so we have access to it, console log matches. And that way you can kind of see that example that I gave out with this dude down here. You can see that play out in the console. Um, now, in terms of running this app, you can't just uh, use the Ionic command line interface tool to serve it to the browser for testing because we're using a native plugin. So the browser doesn't have access to that. So you can use the Ionic View app um, or connect to your phone via USB and use the CLI to run the app on your device. So that's the option that I'm going to do. Um, and so doing that, let me switch back to our console. Let me clear everything here. All right, so I've connected my phone. Um, make sure, you know, if you're if you're on Android, at least I know the process for that. You have to make sure that your um, develop your it's in developer mode, and also USB debugging is enabled. Um, Ionic and Cordova run Android is the command for that, and it takes quite a while the first time you run it. Um, so I'm going to pause. All right, it's getting here <clears throat> near the end of the process, looking at my phone. And by the way, when you run that, you may run into um, a bunch of errors, uh, especially if this is the first time that you've ran it. There's some things that you have to set up on the, um, yeah, the Java and an Android SDK location. So if, if you've never done that, you're going to run into issues, but just Google it and you should be able to find it. So now the app is loaded on my phone. Um, and I'm going to click on say a color, um, red. <laughs> wait, maybe it messed up. Red. There we go. Now it worked. I, I was talking before I hit it, so it didn't give it, uh, the, um, it probably had like multiple words there in the response. Um, just to show you real quickly, um, if you get a Chrome, uh, hit Control Shift I, you'll get out this uh, inspector here. We come on here and go to More Tools, and we go to Remote Devices. Momentarily, this will show up. This is my um, my phone, and come to the bottom. We hit Inspect. Oops, just launch this large window. Um, let me turn on my phone. There we go. So. This right here it just gives you a preview of what's currently on the uh, on your phone on your app. So it's kind of like a, it's basically an inspector for it. And you go to the console, and you can see we have. I uh, there we go. We can see that array that we did the console log. So can I increase this? Yeah. So I can see a color red. Look and see a color red. <laughs> uh, and I can see the second time I did it. It said red, or it could be red as in red past tense. I read something, or R E D D. Um, so let me just do this again real quick. Green. And there you go. So green, or green as in like a city. Um, so it'll put the first result of what is most likely or most common. Um, so let me just do another one just for the heck of it. Corsetro is the best. All right, so just look at all these results. Corset Row <laughs> is the best. So of course it doesn't really know my name uh, or the site name. But yeah, that's basically how it works. Um, so hopefully you found this you know, pretty helpful. Um, you learned a couple different things. Make sure you check out again, Corsetra.com, all the courses we have up, uh, Ionic 3, we have Bootstrap 4, React versus Angular versus Vue, Mean, Stacks, uh, just a bunch of stuff. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it and 
I will see you next time. Goodbye.